the first 14 years of my life, the Braves won consecutive division titles, the best run in MLB to date. They were the first team in the National League to go from last place to first place the next year. They went to the World Series five times and won one. On my first trip to the local library, after moving downtown 20 minutes from my home, I quickly discovered there were only two Braves books in the whole four floors. The Miracle Season and a book by John Smoltz that I wish I could remember the title of. I read that thing like it was a holy canon that quiet, lonely summer. I know that the Braves beat the Astros 6-5 to five a few hours after I was born, and I think in baseball astrology terms that meant I was destined to become a Braves fan. The first World Series I was alive for was the Braves and the Twins. Not as if I could remember it, but I know that people still argue over the bad call it supposedly caused the Braves to lose, as if one call among thousands could determine a game, much less a series. And for 14 years, the Braves at least made it into the postseason. I remember rounding the corner at spring training to see John Smoltz pitching for the first time and subsequently falling in love with his embodied finesse of the sport. At that moment, I became a Braves fan. After an extended flirtation with Champion Stadium, the Ted and I first met when I was 14. My longtime fan grandparents introduced us. Fast forward to me have me three years ago, obsessive fan as I was, feeling an entirely renewed and amplified love of my Braves, watching them win in person for the first time I can remember. Of all the times I remembered watching my first game at the Ted with my grandparents as a kid, seeing that first game with my best friend and greatest love, the very first game that I didn't drag an unwilling boyfriend to, seeing them win for the first time, even in a losing season, was a feeling of fire I could never have imagined. It was thrilling. This moment stayed at the top of my list until I spent my 21st birthday standing in the pouring rain, watching Chris Medlin break his half-century old record and Chipper Jones getting misty-eyed after standing at the plate for the last time at the TED. All of these moments that make up such an important part of my life all happened at the TED. Most days I wander through life with the off chance that I might see someone in that red and blue cap with a Chris White stitched A. And when I do, saw them as it is, nine times out of ten they have no idea that the cap connects to a team, but only a steady and those walls, surrounded by 50,000 fans, 50,000 people who felt the same as I do, who share that undeniable bond. I was part of an intimate family of 50,000 who care as much about Freddie Freeman's childhood stories as their own grandchildren's young years. Each person has a story about the Ted, about the first moment when they walked in and heard the world-famous roar of the tomahawk chop, about the $1 seats that had the worst view of the park but were the hardest to get because the legend of how Ted Turner specified they would always stay that price so that anyone can watch a Braves game. About the place just inside the gates in the Monument Park where the love of their life kneeled on the engraved bricks under the Hank Aaron statue to ask the most important question of their lives. Those bricks hold the names of thousands of people who loved the Ted so much they never wanted to leave his side. Outside of the gates, in the parking lot, almost unnoticed by most, is the place where the Fulton County Stadium used to exist. When the TED was built, they commemorated the old park by putting down memorial markers where the bases used to be, just like you would for an old friend. Sometimes, if you wait for all those who are hurriedly shoving their families in their cars, honking and making risky maneuvers to beat the infamous Atlanta traffic, you'll see an old-timer reading and looking at the metal home plate, reaching down to touch it and closing their eyes to relive old memories. Here is where the slide happened. You can stand on home plate at the exact spot where, in Game 7 of the National League Championship Series in 1992, Sid Bream looked up grinning at the home plate umpire waiting for the safe call that would send the Braves to the World Series. You can physically touch that place in history where his teammates piled on top of him, on top of home plate. If you find yourself at this plate, turn around and you'll see a 750-foot tall photo of a baseball towering above the Ted. It looks oddly commercial amidst a place so enamored with its own history, though many visitors dismiss it as just any baseball. It holds more history than any other part of the park. It's a 715th home run ball after it was hit by Hank the Hammer Aaron, a man who broke records and race barriers in baseball. Aaron's persona imbues itself throughout every inch of the park. He still attends games. On the wall surrounding the memorial field, the words, Home of the Braves, are painted on what used to be red but is now faded orange, tall letters. Home, not site or place or location, but home. We all know that the Braves outgrew this donut-shaped multi-use stadium and needed their own place. But hardly a Braves fan has not gone back and taught their children the history of that place that's memorialized just next door to the stadium. 
Inside the Ted, in almost every direction you look, there are the words, this is Braves country. This, not here or there, but this. As if this is more than a home. This is where the Braves belong. Those words seem fake now, more a marketing scheme than a testament. Many of us are angry. We don't understand why anyone would want to take the Ted out of Atlanta, to destroy the history set into this sacred place over five decades in one fell swoop of a wrecking ball and replace it with office buildings. We don't understand why Atlanta would so easily give up this stadium, where the Olympics were once held, where Hank Aaron changed baseball forever, where so many found pride in their city. But we must come together peacefully and accept what has happened. Instead of give up on our team, boycott the new stadium, hold jersey burnings, we must overcome our anger and hold on to what we have left. If home is where the heart is, the Ted will always be our home, but we must open our heart anew and learn to love again. If the Ted could talk, he'd tell us to cheer up, find solace in each other, and love once again, so that we can protect what we couldn't with the Ted, so that we can show Atlanta the regret of losing such an important part of history.